Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to our 1000 subscriber Q&A which is finally here. First of all, I would like to thank all of you for giving me questions as well as for supporting my channel such that we have reached 1000 this year on January 31st. I am really really grateful for all of you and let's continue to grow this channel into an even larger and more wholesome community. So without further ado, let's begin with the questions that you guys have submitted on both Instagram and YouTube. So I need to pull that up right now. So this Q&A will be split into three segments. The first segment will be questions regarding my own YouTube journey. The second segment will be questions about me. And the final segment will be questions related to school as well as studying. So we'll begin with the questions regarding my YouTube journey first. So the first question is, what is the easiest and hardest part about being a study YouTuber? For me, the easiest part would be that the content I film is mainly part of my daily life. As a student, we need to study, we need to get good grades, we need to fulfill the expectations of a student. So what is easy for me is that I don't need to spend time churning out different content. For example, if I had a gaming channel, I would need to put time into gaming. Then what happens if I don't enjoy gaming anymore and I hate gaming after that? Or I don't have time to game because of school. So something that's easy about being a study YouTuber is that it's just regarding my daily life. I do vlogs and it's very easy to keep continuing and to keep continuing to churn out content. Personally, I am someone who is very interested in studying productivity and all that sort of thing. So these are things that I'm very passionate about and that I'm interested in. So it's not difficult for me to be a study YouTuber because I am already naturally interested in these sort of things. The hardest part about being a study YouTuber, in my opinion, it will be like the need to think of ideas to improve my content and to make it unique, aesthetic, so that more people will watch my content. As you can see, if you have been following my content for quite a while now, you will see that last year, my content, like my thumbnails, were very different from what I'm doing right now. And it has grown a lot over the years because I've tried to notice what other popular YouTubers were doing, so I always take note of those YouTubers, like Singaporean YouTubers like John Leji, um, Yue Mini, Smart Study, and just sort of see what the trend is like. And if you have noticed, once I started to change the style of my thumbnails, so it's not easy to find areas of improvement to keep con to keep making your channel grow because you need your content to stand out. And the thing about study YouTubing is that it's quite difficult to make your content stand out because all of it is just study vlog. So what can you make your study vlog interesting about? That is something that was quite difficult for me. Second question, is doing YouTube hard? I think doing YouTube isn't necessarily hard, but what's hard about it is that you need to be consistent with it. It's not easy to keep posting content regularly. In fact, a lot of my friends or my peers who have started YouTube channels, they didn't really run through the end with it. Some of them might still have it now, but they didn't consistently upload. So they had to rely on those things whereby like you're sharing with friends, family, or um, it's that one really good video that blew up and that's how they got to where they are right now. But in order for your channel to grow, you need to post consistently and it's not easy to post consistently you need a lot of motivation and you have other commitments as well like i have school i have orchestra i have other other things so it's about the consistency and youtube is not an easy thing you need a lot of time you need a lot of effort and that's why i burnt out a lot as well and it's like throughout my youtube journey because i had to put in a lot of time and effort into producing each and every video that i put out one vlog can take like up to 5 hours to edit properly but I've reduced the time a lot now because I'm getting better at it and of course standing out from others and being unique it's part and parcel of being a YouTuber you need to make your content stand out and look good okay next question how did I grow my YouTube channel? if I've mentioned earlier it took a lot of consistency ideation noticing trends seeking constant improvement and of course enjoying the process so I'll elaborate a little bit here and there on each point that I've just made. You need to post very consistently. 
Because when there's more videos, the YouTube algorithm will, will naturally do its work. It will start to allow your videos to gain more reach. And coupled with that, you need to ideate. You need to think of what will see make content interesting. For studying YouTubing, it can be the music component, aesthetic component, ASMR component. Yeah, it's about noticing trends in constant improvement as I've mentioned earlier. My old thumbnails, they were like collages, but now my thumbnails, there's just more clarity to them. And of course, you need to enjoy the process so that you can keep consistent with it and keep ideating and producing new content. How do I get video ideas? Of course, ideation is one, but because I started my channel because I sort of grew up watching a lot of study YouTubers. So I still watch some of them now. I do sort of notice the trends and see what's interesting, what is more popular. And then I start to incorporate that into my channel. And I also look for what you guys want to see. For example, you guys have asked for videos on motivation, how to stay focused, study tips. And that's something that I tried to put out last year in my content outline. Final question um, in this segment is why did I start my YouTube channel? The motivation and goal behind it. So I will just talk about my YouTube journey right from the beginning. So when I was young, I actually started my own channel a few times, about two to three times. And because I was young, I did not know how YouTube worked. It didn't grow very well because I was young, right? I didn't know trends. So my, my subscriber fan base was very small. It just consisted of my friends, me, and maybe some random people here and there. But we never got above like, maybe like 40. Contrary to what you guys might have thought, my first channel was about vlogging my second to third if i had a third was about gaming so i'm here now with a study channel and as you can see i failed quite a bit at the beginning but then i got to be very involved in the study community when i was in primary five thanks to my for you page i think the first the youtubers that got me into the study community were study t and study chai and that's how i also became interested in productivity related stuff and that was also the point where i was studying quite a bit so i thought hey why don't i just share some of my advice and give some people motivation to start doing their work. Another factor was that I was a primary 6 PSLE student and I remember searching for PSLE videos to refer to when I was doing my revision and I found none. There were only like one to two people who actually produced PSLE videos. I wanted to open the community up in this range of PSLE study vlogs stuff. So. That was also another factor why I started my channel. And now you can see that I do have a lot of primary 6, primary 5 students, set 1 students who are watching my uh, my videos and my content. So I'll be sure to release some videos regarding DSA, secondary school preparation, um, PSLE study tips, hopefully around the March season. So during March holidays, I'll probably start to film a bit more. So you guys can stay tuned for that. My next goal would definitely be 10k. Of 5k. Now my motivation is to nurture, inspire, motivate, guide and advise all of you guys. So I will continue my channel for as long as I can to help more of you guys in this very hazy world of studying because I am also struggling so we'll struggle together and then we'll grow together. Okay next section questions about me. The first question are you in a relationship? If so, how do you juggle it and your study? Guys, I'm not in a relationship. And honestly, Anya's high life is kind of too busy to have one. Unless you can really handle a relationship, I don't suggest you get one. Because study should be your first priority. To a certain extent, I do have a lot of friends. And I do have a lot of commitments outside of academics. Like leadership, projects, etc. etc. I have to say, time management is extremely important. And you need to prioritise very well. And so how do I juggle and my, my life? in general. It's just brute force guys. <laughs> Honestly, I don't even know how I did it. I don't know why I'm here right now. I don't know how I'm here right now. I will try to make a video about time management in the future. Next one. When you were younger, do you have as much dedication to studying as much as now? So I actually gamed a lot from primary 1 to primary 4 semester 1. I played a lot of Brawl Stars, Roblox, Clash Royale, 
a lot of the very oh um, ball legends a lot of these very original games and my channel at the beginning was based off me just filming random clips of me playing things like brawl stars and stuff but for me for i started to have goals on what secondary schools i wanted to go to i was i was just very self-motivated and that was also the point where my mom allowed me to take ownership of my work so you know they would buy those like thick stacks of practice papers to do for like in primary school to do my mom just like let me choose what papers from which school I wanted to do. For some reason that was very motivating for primary for me. And that's how I also started to get more hardworking. Cause I was actually taking ownership of my own work and I took a lot of pride in that. And I enjoyed it. I, I enjoyed taking charge of the things that I did and I enjoyed completing and making my to-do list. Now um Different question, I am struggling to finish my to-do list. The final question in this segment is what is my favorite food and what is my favorite pastime? I don't know what else I can say, I love food, okay? But if I had to really choose, I, I really enjoy Korean food. I also really enjoy sushi, Indian rojak. Okay, I just love everything, okay? I, I like food a lot, it makes me happy. For my favorite pastime, I enjoy singing, listening to music. I love Mendo Pop. I'm also watching a lot of K-drama right now, which is not very good because it's CT season. Okay, final segment. This one has a lot of questions. Questions about school and studying. So the first question I received on this topic was, what was the reason I came to NUS High or why I came to NUS High? So I got to know about NUS High through one of NUS High's outreach program. Prior to that, I never knew a school of science existed. I'm very grateful for the outreach program because it, it really nurtured my passion in science and I really enjoyed the experiments they prepared for us and most importantly, it introduced me to the school and that's how I got really, really interested in NUS High. And so because of this outreach program, because the school was a math and science school, I decided to research a lot about NUS High and I realised that, oh my god, wait, there's an accelerated curriculum in the school so if you didn't know my school from SEC 1, we start taking triple science. The school also provides us with a lot of opportunities. The school is really training us to become very good researchers, as you can see, and it does open a lot of doors for us. Next one. Do you have any leadership roles in secondary school? And if you do, how do you handle them? I have mentioned earlier, yes, I do have a lot of commitments. I do have some minor CCA EXCO role in school. I also am a member of a lot of projects, student initiated projects. So how do I handle them? Okay, one thing, you just brute force. Another thing is that don't just join anything and everything. Join the things that you are really passionate in and things that you really really want. It could be something that is useful for your future career prospect or it's just something that you are passionate about and you are interested in and you are happy to help out in that cause. So don't join for the transcript. Join for the growth, join for the experience, join for the fun and make sure you enjoy it. And also don't overload yourself. Don't commit to things just because you want that validation. Because each of us, we have a limited amount of time. We only have 24 hours a day. Take away like 7 hours of sleep. We only realistically have 17 hours left. Eat, school, rest. You really don't have that much time. So if you want to go deep into your commitments, you want to do well in those leadership roles, you want to do your best, your very, very best for each and every single one of them, do not take so many of them. Limit yourself to like not more than 5 at max of commitments outside of academics so that you can really focus and put your best into each and every single one of them next one how do you cope with stress in primary six so honestly if you guys know me personally i am a terrible person at handling stress i am very very bad at handling stress so even until now i still don't take myself take care of myself very well and i don't even have like a proper coping mechanism that i really like can rely on so i really rely on like most of my friends I talk to them, I cry to them, whatever. P6 is a very stressful year because of PSLE. Honestly, in primary 6, I think your best bet is to rely on friends. Because everyone's going through the same thing. So don't, don't stress too much over it. And to all the primary 6 students who are taking their PSLE this year, all the best. I will try my best to release a PSLE video as soon as I can. So, just patient stay tuned okay so how is your two in your high are you coping well with subjects and friendships so recently i've been very unproductive i have to say that as a study youtuber i am not fulfilling my role of being productive um and my cts are coming soon but yet i am filming and churning out content 
year two is fine it has been manageable because year one I, we went through like a lot change was very drastic to a certain extent uh, but yeah year two doesn't seem that difficult as compared to year one now and I'm coping fine as for friendship I think every any school you go to you will have some friendship issues here and there even when you're transiting from primary school to secondary school so I think friendship issues they come and go it's just how you do with them you accept them Life goes on, you move on. Next one, PSLE study tips. That one, I'll make a proper video soon. But for the primary school kids who are watching my video right now, you can go and check out my top 8 study tips in 8 minutes video somewhere here or here. So you can check out my study tips. I ranked it to like math, application subjects, inference subjects, problem solving subjects. You can go and check out the video. Most challenging part for me in chemistry. So chemistry is actually my least favorite science amongst the triple sciences. So there's physics, bio and chem. I prefer bio and physics to chem. The reason is because chemistry you need to apply, you need to understand, you need to memorize. Which is like the worst of both worlds from physics and bio. Which is terrible. I will still always prefer bio and physics to chem. The so second last question, tips for studying humanities. If you watch my study tips video, you would know that I did not include a section for inference subjects, which is like humanities and languages because I am really bad at them. Honestly, the only thing I can tell you right now is to like read news, learn how to write better essays. So language skills is also pretty important. You can go and find some courses on that to do if you have time. And you do also have very good foundation on the keywords in the like the humanities subjects or like, or like economics. You need to be familiar with like the different terms and keywords that you can use in writing your and crafting your answers during the exam. Last question, tips for studying math. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can refer to my study tips video that I released last year for more details. But essentially for math, I would suggest that you make error books. You practice a lot of questions, do a lot of practice questions, keep practicing, and then you'll get a hang of it very well. You should also understand the concepts well inside the math chapter and just be very familiar with the different data questions. That's it for today's video. A lot of you guys have been requesting for YPT study groups so I am going to set that right up after I finish this video. After I finish filming this video. So I will let you guys know what the password is and how to access YPT and all of that. So thank you guys for watching this video. Thank you guys for 1000 subscribers. And I will see you guys on Tuesday for another collaboration part 2 with Blue Cube. Bye bye! So I have made a YPT study group. Um, what is YPT you may ask? YPT is a study timer sort of app where you can study together with friends or um, the public people and then you can track the amount of time you study. So yes, a lot of you guys have requested for this. So here is our YPT group. So here is the YPT homepage, go to groups and then tap the plus button, find a magnifying glass and then here is our group name which is just called study with pay. Once you search that, you'll see that right there, password is pay studies, you can underscore. Yeah, there are only 50 slots so enter if you want to be inside the group and yes that's it for today's video and I'll see you guys in YPT.